passionate, probably the most passionate about them all, is that if you, the way things have changed is, generally speaking, people believed in God. I think even 50 years ago, I think what God does is God calls people together, God calls people into meetings, God pe calls people to forgive one another. And green, that is the bedrock of community, is this call to actually, you've got to keep meeting with each other, you've got to keep working together, you share projects together. That holds a community apart. And I think if anything has changed, it's the way the tide has gone out on God. Most people, if they do have a faith, it's a very private matter, rather than a public demonstration of that faith, which involves going to church, involving yourself in congregational life, sharing your ideas, sharing your thoughts with others and working in partnership. That seems to be the, the, the absolute key. Uh, and the change that's happened in our community is partly to do with the way people have, have walked away from that. And until they come back, I think there's going to be a lot of difficulty really getting community up and running in any meaningful way in the, in the near future. But things are, I mean, we, see, we are seeing some encouragement, which is great, and it's lovely to see people and families starting to get involved. And, um, yeah, we're very thankful for that. I just want to add to that about what Matthew said about traffic is that, you know, we're trying to build community and it seems in everybody's interest that people look out for each other and help each other and almost police the area ourselves and build community, look out for people. It's got to be in everybody's interest. And what we really want is the kind of support of the council or government because we don't want them doing it for us. But like the traffic that comes through this village cuts this village into three parts. At least you've got the estate over one side, you've got the main bit over here, and you've got this on this side of the village. And, you know, people feel intimidated crossing the roads, you can't let the kids out. And it wouldn't take much to put a 20 mile an hour zone around the village, it really wouldn't. And that would transform the community aspect of this village, I believe, because suddenly you'd have an area where people felt more safe, they were more able to, to release uh, kind of their, their, their families to kind of come and go. People would walk everywhere instead of driving. And that has just got to change. I, I feel passionately about that. I think it's one of the, probably the number one problem here we've got here. Um, you know, we're going to have an event here, which is going to be maybe, maybe 200 people will come. You've got to put a lot of work, a lot of effort in, and it would be just great to think that the government would look on what we do and just say, well, we can do something, we can just regulate the traffic, and this will help people like us to do what we're trying to do. Yes, yeah, I think the question you asked was, would I benefit from having a shop or a, or a post office or a pub near to me? I'm, I'm actually living down in Brugeswood, so we're yeah. quite restricted in the amount of... So for myself, having a small local yeah. shop or, uh, or a post office is probably only half a mile away, just down the road. That'd be quite beneficial to me. I know in the village of Love Bradley, they already have a post office and a couple of pubs, um, but that's about sort of two, two and a half miles away from me. So for myself, yeah, in, a, in an even more rural hamlet where I am, yeah, I think it would be quite beneficial. So, um, yeah, good. Houses in gardens, but they're 
don't fall off very nice quality. My neighbour over the road, he's built in the garden. It's a very nice house. And obviously, yes, you've got to go on expanding, but um, we'd like to keep in the village limits because, well, it's a village and that's the way we want to stay. But um, I wonder how many other people will say that. They'd be very interested what the results of this survey are. You see, I'm old and so possibly I agree that young people moving to the village may have different ideas, but um, some of us old ones have still got an idea of what a village should be, so that's my opinion and that my wife supports me. I am. When I was a little girl, we lived down the road and we would a shop there, Mr. D. I used to go up the top and they used to get an old lady a cup of tea when I did come out of school. No so mother knew where I was. I was up to the dog with me. I loved children from the old people who were strong. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know there used to be five shops in Bradley? There was one down the door beneath. Mr. Jones had it and it was Paradise. And then you go round the church lane, you would stand here. He had the post office in the shop. And then you come out and you go down onto the Tefbrook Road and Lowwoods had his shop there. <laughs> and then you go down to the Trophy Road, Mrs. Belcher had a shop. <laughs> and I, Dear old lady at a shop by the cricket field. <laughs> so the five shops, we, they got nothing in them. Mm -hmm. So it's in the terrible, it's a post office in the shop there. It, 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 across the road, there used to be an old lady, she used to sell different little things. And then there was Mr. Bilbin, he had a milk business. So, you see, we have plenty to go shopping. And our pennies. <laughs> if there weren't so many houses. <laughs> one, one day I was living at uh, Trisha Lane in one of those little bungalows opposite where you live. <laughs> And a bank come up and he said, can you tell me where our chick drive is? I said, no, I can't. It's not a bit. And he said, I said, well, you're going to build another place, aren't you? And he said, well, yes, we're well, thinking of everything. And I said, I think it's wicked. This was a lovely, pretty little village when I was a girl. And we were all friends, families nearly. You could go anywhere. But now I wouldn't give a penny for Bradley. <laughs>